Yo, 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 David Dixon, what's up? It's your boy Julio giving a shout out from the Dirty Dirty Sandbox, a.k.a. Afghanistan, Operation Enduring Freedom 2012. Give it up for your boy. Brother, you know that I've got to absolutely hate it that I can't be at your wedding today, but uh, that doesn't mean that I can't give you a shout out from across the sea. So here I am coming at you live from Helmand province. Uh, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Dixon, uh, greetings to both of you. Bunny, thanks so much for making this happen. I really appreciate all the effort that you put into putting me up on the screen. And uh, I know that David's gonna appreciate it too. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wallemeyer, Greetings and congratulations to the both of you. I'm sure you're both very excited on this joyous occasion. Uh, Mom, Dad, I know you guys are in the audience tonight. Now, you guys haven't actually seen my face since the day that I left way back in January. So here I am. Hey, Mom. I'm on TV. Now, uh, Mom, I want you to look carefully. As you can see, I have been eating, okay? So you can stop worrying about me now, okay? <laughs> now... Um, just as an aside to all you uh, cute single bridesmaids out there, and now listen, um, now I know David pretty well, and uh, chances are he's probably already started talking me up big time to each one of you guys, and I mean, knowing David, <laughs> he's such a character, he, he's probably already started telling you about how great of a guy I am, and how sensitive I am, and how much I like to listen, and take long walks on the beach, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, look, first of all, I'll just come right out in a minute, okay? Guilty as charged, all right? Yes, it's true, I have been known to give my jacket off my back to a random homeless guy, and I, I occasionally rescue puppies, but I mean, all of that aside, look, I just, I just don't want you to let David get too carried away when he's talking about me because um, he has a tendency to do that. So I'm just saying, you know, take whatever he says with a slight grain of salt. That's all. He, 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 even though it may be true. Um, but anyways, David, you've been to the combat zone a couple times now. You know what it's like out here, man. You know we're not allowed to have alcohol. So unfortunately, I cannot raise a proper drink to you tonight. But one thing we do have plenty of is a bottle of drinking water of our very own brand. So um, that's what I'm going to be raising to you tonight. I lift my bottle of water to my boy, to my best friend in the world, David Dixon. Man, I knew from the time that you and I met in flight school that you and I were gonna be really close friends. We just had way too many things in common to uh, not be great friends and I, uh, you know, we had to scratch and claw our way through flight school together, and I know, looking back on it now, there's no way I would have made it through without you, man. So thanks so much for being by my side. You know, I thought that it was the greatest gift from God that you and I got our wings and got to get stationed in California together. But little did I know that getting stationed in California together wasn't the real gift, because the real gift that God gave to me was a gift of your friendship, and it's a gift that I cherish to this day, and one of the things that I count amongst the most valuable things in my life. And, uh, you know, we got to California, and uh, man, God just kept on blessing us and blessing us. He gave us that awesome house in Cardiff overlooking the ocean, and he got us some great roommates, and then he worked it so that we could deploy together for the first time, and that was, that was really great, because a couple dates during that deployment, I'm never going to forget. November 20th, 2006, that was the day that you and I flew in formation for the first time, crossed the border into Iraq, and that was the day you really became my wingman. January 1st, 2007, that was the day that you pinned on my new rank of captain, and I'm really glad that it was you because I didn't want it to be anybody else, man. And uh, May 29th, 2007, that was the day that we finally came home after getting extended, what was it like four times? We came home from that hellacious deployment, and uh, came home to the loving and open arms of our family and our friends. And to this day, still, I can unequivocally say that that was the best day of my life. It's absolutely nothing like coming home from war alive with your best buddy. I'm really glad that I got to share that day with you, man. Um, so tonight, I would like to lift my bottle of water to to the guy who talks sense into me when I need some sense talked into me, to the guy who is always up for pulling up a really good prank and can do it with a completely straight face, to the guy who boosts my confidence when I have none by showing me all the things that I have to be confident about. 
to the guy who talks me into walking up to that girl and introducing myself when I'm too afraid to do it, to the guy who makes me see that it's not that hard to accomplish the things that I want to accomplish if I just know who to talk to and if I just show a little bit of confidence, to the guy who has spent countless hours praying with me, both in really great times and in really tough times, to the guy who challenges me to be a better friend, to be a better brother, to be a better son, and to be a better man after God's own heart. To my fellow Marine, and my fellow officer, to my brother in arms, to my friend, to my hermano, to my wingman, in every sense of the word. David, for all these things that you are to me, I pray every day that God will give me the courage to be the friend to you that you have been today to me. I want you to know that you're always going to be able to count on me. I want you to know that I congratulate you and that I share your happiness and that you may find this hard to believe, but I'm just as happy for you today as you are for you. Just think about all the times that we spent praying for this very day and all the times that we spent praying that God would prepare your heart and that God would prepare Jackie's heart wherever she was, even though we didn't know her name, and that God would prepare both your paths to come together at just the right time. Brother, today is the day. This is the day that we have both been asking the Lord for for a long time, and I, I absolutely share in your joy. So, David Dixon, to you, my brother, salud. Now, to the lovely bride, to Jackie. Jackie, on this day of days, on this beautiful day that the Lord has brought you and David together, on this day that you choose to give both your hand and your heart to David for the rest of your days, Jackie, I would like to extend to you my deepest condolences. I mean, Jackie, I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you know, you and I, we only met one time, so I didn't exactly get the chance to warn you what you're getting yourself into with David. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, tough break there. But, but you know, that, that, that's okay. That's okay because, because David, David is a great guy. D David's a great guy <clears throat> because... Um, because he's, uh, well, okay, you know what, um, you know, David, David's a good guy. Yeah, David, David is a good guy. And, 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 and I know that because, uh, because there is, well, there was this one time that, yeah, well, um, okay, but you know what, Jackie, David's a guy. Okay, uh, he's a guy, and uh, you know you you get what you get with the guy, and you know that that whole uh, back acne thing that he's got going on, you know you'll you'll get over that somehow. Um, but you know the point is, I, I want you to remember, Jackie, that there are a lot of really great reasons why you are marrying David, and those are really really important to remember because you know you're both smart people. And you both know what you're getting yourself into with marriage. I mean, you're both well aware that, uh, you know, marriage isn't a bed of roses every single day. You're going to have your difficult days with each other, which is to be expected. That's perfectly normal. That is part of a healthy, growing relationship. Uh, but what I am asking you today, Jackie, is that when you do have those difficult days with David, think back on all those really great reasons that you are marrying David today. Please remember, please, please, for the love of God, do not forget those reasons because, I mean, Lord knows you certainly didn't marry David for his looks. I mean, I mean, let's face it, the, the guy's face looked like it caught on fire and somebody tried to stamp it out while they were wearing cleats, you know? I mean, poor guy's got a face only Bunny Dixon could love, you know? No. No, no, Jackie, 
Now, you, you didn't marry David for his looks. You married David for his character. And 20, 40, 60 years from today, his character is all you're going to have left. I mean, you definitely don't have his looks now, so you're not going to have him then, you know what I'm saying? Now, if you do find yourself having those difficult days with him, and you just can't trust him for whatever reason, let me remind you of this. The United States government trusts David with an $11 million aircraft. So to quote Maverick, if the government trusts him, maybe you can. So, with that, Jackie, I would like to welcome you to the United States Marine Corps. You have now chosen to take on the toughest job in the Corps. Now, I trust that David has filled you in on the challenges that life in the Marine Corps brings. And if he hasn't, well, it's too late, because you signed your name on the dotted line, and we own you. You understand that? No, but seriously. I think that you should know, Jackie, that the challenges that the Marine Corps brings, they will be great. And I promise you that the Marine Corps will test your patience to its absolute limit. There's always going to be things changing right up to the last minute. Things like David's deploying, he's not deploying, you're moving, you're not moving, you're moving to California, you're moving to North Carolina. Wait, no, you're moving back to California. Wait, you're moving to Japan. So, you see, there's going to be a lot of administrative procedures like that that will directly impact your personal life, and they seemingly have no logic, unfortunately. There's going to be a lot of silly little rules that you're going to have to follow uh, and certain etiquette protocols. Things like you won't even be allowed to wear workout clothes on base unless you are at the gym or on your way to the gym. You know, silly little things like that. It's going to be frustrating at times. And as an officer's wife, you will be held to a certain standard of conduct. You're going to have new roles to fill as a friend and confidant to the other spouses in David's unit. You're going to be expected to participate in unit functions, and you're going to be expected to take on leadership roles amongst the spouses. Now, Jackie, all these things, they may seem like trivial parts of joining an organization of sorts, but what I would like for you to understand today, what you must understand, is that today, you are not just joining an organization. You are joining a family, a family of Marines. Now, make no mistake, Jackie, we are fierce warriors, and there's many good reasons why we are feared by many around the world. But those same qualities that make us such fierce warriors are also the very same qualities that make us so loyal and so close and so tight-knit. We are brothers. We are brothers in arms. And we never leave a Marine behind. The words Semper Fidelis, they mean always faithful. And they describe very well what we are because we are faithful. We are faithful to our Marines. We are faithful to our units. We are faithful to our core. We are faithful to our country. We are faithful to our family. And we are faithful to our God. This is a family that you're joining, Jackie. It's not just any organization. Now, in this family, you're going to get to meet a lot of extraordinary Americans. It's those extraordinary Americans that we call the spouses of active duty service members. Now you're going to find that these extraordinary Americans are strong and they're loyal. They band together and they help each other in times of need. They help each other through the emotional stress of deployments. They help each other through those dark times when they don't know the whereabouts of their Marine. And yes, they help each other through those times when their Marine doesn't come home. And it's not that these people are extraordinary on their own, but it's the trials that they go through and the fact that they go through them together, that's what makes them extraordinary. And you will become one of these extraordinary Americans, Jackie. Now, 
I'm going to say something that's not easy to say, especially on your wedding day. But life in the Marine Corps is not easy. And it pains me to say that the Marine Corps is notorious amongst the services for failed marriages. Now, I'm not saying this to scare you. It's to the contrary. I'm telling you this in order to highlight an opportunity. An opportunity to become something extraordinary. Now, just like the process of becoming a Marine is difficult, it also presents an opportunity. An opportunity to become something greater. Now, sometimes life in the Marine Corps, it is difficult. Most won't even attempt it, and many that do fail. But those that do succeed are stronger, they're more dedicated, and they gain the fortitude to persevere through trials and hardships. So you see, Jackie, where some see obstacles, others see an opportunity. Now, if marriage in the Marine Corps is difficult, that also means that it's an incredible opportunity to strengthen your marriage in a way that few others can. Now, you will go through trials, Jackie. I promise you. But I also promise you that God is faithful to always see us through those trials in order to complete his work in us. Now, you may not look forward to those trials. Nobody does. But what you can look forward to when you're in the middle of those trials is what God will complete in you and in David and in your marriage and in your family. Now, you've heard that we are the few and the proud. And as officers, we are even fewer. We are somewhat akin to a band of knights. And as you know, knights swear an oath of allegiance to each other. It's an oath to protect each other, to protect each other's honor, and to protect each other's families. Today, Jackie, when you join our family, you become a part of everything that we hold dear, and you become a part of what I have personally sworn to protect. So today, Jackie, I would like to welcome you to your new family. Now, to the both of you, remember this day, and remember all those really great reasons that you decided to marry each other. And I'll be there along the way to remind you guys, all right? Now, everybody, I know that I'm up on a video screen, but that doesn't mean that you can't join me in a nice toast to the new bride and groom. So please, if you would, join me in this ironic blessing upon Jackie and David. So go on, everybody, get your glasses in the air. Everybody, yeah, even you, quiet guy back in the, uh, the back there. All right, please. Now, Jackie and David, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look with favor upon you and give you peace. May the Lord bless your paths together for the rest of your days. And may he bless you with many years together and with many children together. I pray all of this in the name of the Lord God Most High, in the name of our coming, conquering King who is soon to come, in the name of Hashem Adonai, in the name of of the Son of the Most High, Yeshua, Mashiach ben David, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for letting me crash your party. I really appreciate it. Um, as long as I'm up here, I would like to take the opportunity to thank everyone that has prayed for me and that has encouraged me and has sent so many kind words and some goodies in the mail to uh, help me get me through this period. Now, this is my third deployment. And even as far back as my first deployment six years ago that I did with David, ever since then, I have just been in absolute awe of the American people and your unceasing show of support for the American troops. And you've done all that no matter what your feelings towards a war have been. And for that, I and my Marines would like to personally extend to you our gratitude. We thank you very much. And we spent over six long months here in Afghanistan. And before I left, I decided that my mission as a company commander would be complete if I brought home every one of my 59 Marines 
safe and sound back to their families. Now, I'm not going to shield you from the reality of war. We are in a dangerous place, and my Marines have been shot at. But thanks to you, and thanks to your prayers, thanks to your encouragement and your kind words, and thanks most of all to favor from the Lord, I'm happy to report that my mission is accomplished. And in just a few weeks, I'm bringing every single one of my Marines back home. Now, there's no way I could possibly thank all of you enough for being a part of that. But just for tonight, I would like to say thank you again and again and again. So, Brother Dix, I'll be home not that long from now. You and me, we're going to go surfing as soon as I get back. Jackie, make sure you give him a couple days off let him hang out with me, okay? Mom, Dad, I'll be home real soon. All right? Bye-bye.